Hey Prestonwood.live online community. I am so excited to be speaking with y'all today. My name is Bruno and I work as an intern to our adult ministry here at Prestonwood. I specifically serve with our young marrieds and it's been such an awesome experience so far, but I'm really excited to be speaking with our online community today. And we've been speaking about the fruits of the spirit for the last few weeks and uh, what each of them are and, and how, as we meditate on each of those fruits of the spirit, we can ask the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and continue to mold us and shape us into the image of Christ. And so that's been such a great series. We spoke about gentleness last week, but this week we're going to do a little bit of a pivot and I'm going to be bringing a word out of the book of Revelation in chapter three. And it's such an interesting word because in Revelation 2 and 3, uh, it's what to give you a, a little bit of context. John is having this prophetic vision and Jesus is speaking directly to him uh, as, as he's addressing uh, issues within seven of these early churches after Jesus' ascension in the later part of the first century. And so Jesus is speaking to each of these churches and basically running a diagnostic. Um, he's having areas uh, where the church can improve. He's giving them warnings about uh, things that may uh, come soon. And he's praising them in the places where they've been faithful, faithful to his word and faithful uh, uh, to the ministry. And so I want to talk about one of those churches, specifically the last one. It's Revelation chapter 3. We're going to be starting in verse 15 and reading to verse 17 in this first bit. So he's talking to the church in Laodicea and he says, I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. For you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Now, I don't, I don't say this to bring anyone down or to say that the church in general is not doing a, a good job. But what I am saying is that this church in Laodicea can serve as an example. And to the extent that we see parallels, we need to be on guard and see what Jesus is telling us uh, to do in the situation that we might see ourselves, um, you know, matching some of this description. So the thing I want to call to attention to is, you know, us as a society, uh, no matter where we are in the world today, it is a lot easier for us today to uh, not realize just how much we are dependent on God. And that when we do anything for the Lord, the Lord is eminently concerned with our heart posture. We see this theme throughout the Bible. I mean, from Genesis to literally Revelation here, we see exactly that. We see in Genesis chapter 4, uh, the story of Cain and Abel, that Abel's sacrifice of his first livestock in the fattiest portions was good and pleasing to the Lord because Abel gave of himself uh, uh, sacrificially. The Lord loved that sacrifice and that when, or when Abel, excuse me, when Abel gave that, the Lord loved that sacrifice. And that when Cain gave to the Lord, it was the leftovers of his produce and, and that the Lord, uh, that, that, that wasn't a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. Um, and, and the difference was the heart posture with which each of those two gave to the Lord. We see in Isaiah, the prophets, the prophets in general were very concerned with the heart of the people of Israel. And in Isaiah, uh, we see that um, people will, will ask the Lord for things and they'll say, Lord, why are you not answering our prayers? We're fasting and, and, and uh, doing all the right things. And, and the Lord responds like you fast with contrition in your heart and the pounding of fists. How can you expect me to answer your play prayers? Essentially what we see here is that they're just going through the motions and that that doesn't matter to the Lord as much as where our hearts are. 
We even see it when Jesus was walking the earth in Luke 14, verses 34, uh, 34 and 35. Uh, Jesus is speaking about his followers and that we're to be the salt of the earth. And he says, what good is salt if it loses its saltiness? It is not even fit for the manure pile. And so what I want to make really clear here is that this idea that uh, if we're not hot or cold, it, it is disgusting or displeasing to the Lord to the point where he spits or spews and vomits that out of his mouth. Uh, that is a consistent theme throughout the Bible. And so when he's speaking to this church here, I think what we need to realize is that their hearts have allowed themselves to see the comfort of the good systems that they've put in place as a church. This is a church, mind you, that was in a in a thriving area. They were doing well for themselves. They were growing. Um, by outside appearances, it looked like they were doing very well. But what the Lord is saying is that they were kind of phoning it in. They were going through the motions. They were not hot and not cold. And this idea of the temperature of water back then um, was really important because cold water had really important and practical uses and hot water had really important and practical uses but lukewarm water had no practical use back in that day and was actually quite dangerous because uh, it was the only temperature of water that was um, the kind of temperature that allowed bacteria and disease and viruses to grow. And so um, luke water, lukewarm water was something that was, was, was sickening literally uh, uh, back in the day. And so Jesus is saying that this church that uh, says, I am rich and am in need of nothing. Maybe they have a, a great building or, um, you know, they're reliant on, on these like worldly securities uh, that they've become dependent on those things instead of on the Lord. They've stopped looking to the Lord as their provider, their Jehovah Jireh. The, the, they stopped recognizing that it was the Holy Spirit by which and through which we can do any pleasing ministry for the Lord. And so my encouragement to you today, online community, is the same one that Jesus has. In verse 19, he goes on to say, as many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. So that this discipline is coming out of love. He says, so be zealous and repent. The solution is that easy. Anytime that we're, we're being too apathetic or we're not listening to the spirit, we're not in the word and, and we're just kind of phoning it in as a church, even globally as a church through our online community and our local campuses, wherever we are, um, the solution is easy. Just be zealous and repent. Just give it to the Lord. Lay it at the feet uh, of Jesus. And and he says um, that, see that I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. And so this, this, this is such a perfect image because what Jesus is saying is that it is completely and totally up to just one thing, just repent whenever we're complacent or apathetic um, in, in whatever ministry that God has placed us. Um, he's given us the solution there, and it's beautifully simple through the, the mighty and powerful work of Jesus's blood that he shed on the cross and the hope that we have in his ascension. And so I just want to encourage you, online community, with that word today, uh, and I hope you have a blessed rest of your week.